a girl mysteriously disappeared, and the police suspected she had been killed. But during the investigation, thousands of witnesses claimed to have seen the girl after the incident. On Friday, March 25, 1988, around 4.30 p.m., a beautiful 18-year-old girl named Lisa Marie Kimmel drove her black 1988 Honda CRX to visit her boyfriend Ed Yarok in Cody, Wyoming. She had a distinctive license plate that read Lil Mississippi. The weather was clear and Lisa planned to take Interstate 25 to Wyoming. She called her boyfriend before leaving and said she expected to arrive in about 8 hours. At around 9 p.m., just before Lisa disappeared, she was briefly stopped for speeding 60 miles south of Casper. The signature on the ticket and the audio recording showed that the girl who was pulled over was indeed her. Another thing that caught the attention of the police was her unique license plate Lil Mississippi. After that, Lisa lost contact and no one knew what happened to her. Lisa was born on July 18, 1969, in Covington, Tennessee. She was the eldest daughter in the family and had two younger sisters. Lisa grew up in Billings, Montana and graduated from Billings High School in 1987. She then started working at an Arby's restaurant in Aurora, Colorado, and rose to the position of manager. Her mother Sheila was the regional manager of the chain restaurant, and they traveled between Billings and Denver every week. This week, her mother planned to go skiing, so she flew to Billings a day earlier. Lisa planned to stop in Cody, Wyoming, to pick up her boyfriend, but tragedy struck. On March 26, her boyfriend called Lisa's family and told them that Lisa had not arrived in Cody at the scheduled time. Her mother Sheila immediately reported her missing. A week later, on April 2nd, two men fishing in the North Platte River found Lisa's half-naked body face down in the weeds and called the police. The police arrived quickly and found that Lisa's body had no signs of decay due to the cold weather. The autopsy showed that Lisa had been beaten, bound, and sexually assaulted before being killed. She had six stab wounds to her head and body, but even without the stab wounds, the head injury would have killed her in minutes. The police also found Lisa's blood on an old government bridge 400 meters away. The bridge was rarely used because it was old and dilapidated, so the police did not rule out that it was done by a local resident. The police immediately questioned the local residents. A witness who lived near the bridge said they saw a black car parked there on Saturday morning, March 26. The police estimated that Lisa's time of death was around dawn on March 26, which was five hours after she was stopped for speeding. Strangely enough, in the following days, thousands of people from across the northwest United States and Canada called the police saying they had seen Lisa and her car. Some witnesses said they saw her with an unidentified man. The most incredible thing was that these sightings were all after Lisa was killed. Two of the most reliable sightings were on March 26 and 27. One occurred in Buffalo, two hours drive from where the body was found. The witness was Donna Coppa Patrick, the wife of the Buffalo County Sheriff. She was very sure that she saw Lisa's car in front of her at around noon on March 26. She noticed that it was a Montana license plate with Lil Miss written on it. She clearly saw Lisa wearing a pink sweater. Another sighting occurred in Casper, only 20 minutes drive from where the body was found. Another girl named Diana also noticed a car with a Montana license plate with Lil Miss written on it while driving at around 1.45 p.m. on March 27. The reason she remembered it so clearly was because her roommate had a dog with the same name. She also saw that the driver had blonde hair and wore a yellow sweater. But in these sightings, Lisa did not give any signs of distress. But Lisa's parents said their daughter never had a yellow or pink sweater. Two hours after Diana saw Lisa, a cashier at a gas station in Buffalo also saw Lisa with a mysterious man. The cashier also noticed Lisa's license plate. Another key clue in this case was Lisa's car, a black Honda CRX with Lisa's unique license plate Lil Mississippi. The police never found this car after they discovered Lisa's body. Lisa's parents even used a small plane to fly over the route their daughter drove, but still did not find their daughter's car. In October 1988, less than a year after Lisa's body was buried, Lisa's relatives found a mysterious note on her tombstone that read, Dear Lisa, there are words to say how much you are missed. The pain never leaves. LT is so hard without you. You will always live in me. Your death was my painful loss. But heaven's sweet gain. Love always. Strength below hawk. The police found out that the signature was a character from a popular TV show at the time. As for why the note writer used this name, the police had no idea. The existence of the note also became a mystery. Another federal agent from Billings, Don Flannery, said he went to Texas, Nevada and Alaska to investigate Lisa's case. He spent six years taking blood samples from more than a dozen people and doing DNA tests, but ultimately came up empty. The case was shelved. In June 2002, the tools used to assault Lisa were found and DNA was extracted from the samples and compared. The killer's DNA matched that of a man named Dale Wayne Eaton from Moneta, Wyoming.
Eaton was serving time in Englewood Federal Prison in Littleton, Colorado, for a weapons charge. The police immediately launched an investigation. Dale Wayne Eaton, a 57-year-old drifter, had his DNA profile entered into the database because of his illegal use of firearms. During the investigation, the police found out that Eaton's neighbor said he had seen Eaton digging a big hole in his backyard. Eaton's home was about 121 kilometers from where Lisa's body was found. In July 2002, the police found Lisa's car and her distinctive license plate Lil Miss next to an old shed in Eaton's backyard. The police also found out that Lisa had been held captive there for six days before being killed. This also explained why so many people saw Lisa after March 26, 1988, the date the police estimated Lisa was killed. In addition, handwriting expert Jim Bras compared Eaton's handwriting with the signature on Lisa's tombstone and concluded that they matched. In October 2002, Eaton was charged with eight counts related to Lisa, including first-degree premeditated murder, aggravated kidnapping, aggravated robbery, first-degree sexual assault, and second-degree sexual assault. In addition, Eaton's cellmate Joseph Francis Dax testified that Eaton had confessed to him that he had offered Lisa a ride and she accepted. On the way, Eaton made advances on Lisa, but she rejected him and even showed some disgust. So Lisa pulled over and asked Eaton to get out of the car. Then things escalated and Eaton kidnapped and killed Lisa. On March 20, 2004, Eaton was convicted of all the charges and sentenced to death. He appealed but failed. In 2005, Lisa's mother Sheila published a book called The Murder of Lil Miss, which tells the story of her daughter's life and the murder case. Her mother recalled in the book how she collapsed when her daughter's body was found on April 2, 1988. Her body was thrown into the cold North Platte River near Casper, Wyoming. Our beautiful daughter was gone. In 2005, her mother Sheila sued Eaton for wrongful death of her daughter and won the case. Her mother received all of Eaton's property, but the family decided to use Eaton's home to mourn their daughter. So they burned down Eaton's house on the day their daughter Lisa would have turned 36. The court planned to execute Eaton in February 2010, but he received a stay of execution in December 2009. In 2012, Eaton's lawyers brought Lisa's case back to court. They claimed that he did not receive a fair trial and should not be sentenced to death. They also argued that Eaton suffered from bipolar disorder and was mentally ill. They also said that the inmate who testified against Eaton in court did not know the consequences of doing so and that the jury was not informed of this. In 2014, a federal court overturned Eaton's death sentence. In 2015, the prosecution appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. In 2020, the Supreme Court refused to hear the case. The police also found out that Lisa's murder case might be part of a serial killing case in Wyoming that took place from 1983 to 1996. The time of Lisa's murder in 1988 matched this time period. The case was also known as the Great Basin Murders. Most of the victims were young women who disappeared first and then were found murdered. Only Lisa's body was found in a popular fishing spot, so it attracted attention. 